Hello everyone, welcome to the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Harry Reagan. Later, a look inside the Jacksonville Historical Society's archives. But first, the Durkeeville Historical Society, and our guest is Lloyd Washington. Welcome, Lloyd. Welcome, glad to be here. Uh, tell us a little bit about Durkeeville. We're going to see a video in a moment, but uh, Durkeeville and the Durkeeville Historical Society. Well, Durkeeville was uh, established in 1937. Mm -hmm. It was actually the Durkeeville Housing Project. And so it, it was the first place where we had both uh, public housing as well as people could own their own homes in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, something very different and new. And, hopeful, and it has turned out to be quite an interesting place and a place, quite a place I've learned a lot about. And a lot of new and uh, interesting developments as well, right? Oh, yes, especially now that we have the new yeah. Durkee Oaks, mm -hmm. and it's quite an individual place. Again, you can own your own homes now, and it's really grown. Well, we're going to see as much of the video as we can. Uh -huh. So let's uh, roll the video and we'll talk some more afterward. Okay. The Durkeville Historical Society presents Durkeville, a rich legacy of community pride. The Durkeville Historical Society, with Rodell Roberts as charter president, was organized in 1998 to preserve the past document the present, and plan for the future. Boundaries of this neighborhood extend from Old King's Road to 20th Street, and all streets between Spires and Jefferson. The beginnings of Durkeeville probably began with the end of slavery. Several soldiers from the north saw cities like Jacksonville as a business opportunity. In the area just north and west of downtown Jacksonville, a Union soldier named Joseph Durkee bought property that would become Durkeeville. He was a very distinguished man that would eventually become sheriff of the city. His heirs would both partner to develop the area and sell parts to the federal government to build a housing project under the Federal Works Administration during the Depression. During the mid-1930s, Durkeeville was developed on barren land owned by Dr. J. Durkee. The woods surrounding Durkeeville were an ideal location for more than 200 homes built by Brewster Durkee and contractor J.E. Hutchins. Durkeeville became Jacksonville's first housing project. It would replace slums and substandard housing in the city's handsome town and Brooklyn neighborhood. Schools in these communities were also found to be dilapidated, inadequately funded, and overcrowded, according to a study of Negro life in Jacksonville chaired by Abraham Lincoln Lewis, the founder and president of the Afro-American Life Insurance Company. Lewis exhibited a genuine concern to improve the quality of life for his fellow man. For many years, the family of A.L. Lewis has made significant contributions to the social, civic, religious, educational, and economic growth of the community. When Durkeeville opened on the Juneteenth Saturday, June 19, 1937, Willie and Elizabeth Snowden's family were the first tenants to move in. Their daughter, Joyce Snowden Booker, graduated in the first kindergarten class at the Durkeeville Nursery School, sponsored by the Mothers Club. Several other members of the Snowden family also lived in Durkeeville. Edith Boyd is fondly remembered as the first woman manager of Durkeeville. Recreation was the social anchor. Directors Emmett Reed, Essie McRae, and Florida Dwight dispensed training and discipline with love. Reed and his bride, Willie May, were among the earlier residents of this landscape project. It had modern and spacious housing features, including plumbing, electricity, and safe heating conveniences. Many families, such as the Aikens, lived in Durkeeville for more than 40 years. World War I veteran Joe James and Angel of Mercy, Earth of White, were pioneers in providing help and assistance for people in need. The land north of Durkeeville was also developed. The Vira Gibson Brown has lived in Durkee Gardens since 1939. She and her husband, Oliver Brown, were among the first families to move in the upscale Durkee Gardens community during World War II. 
The development of Durkee Gardens flourished at the end of World War II. Young couples struggled to save the money for the large down payment they took to become homeowners. Veterans found employment and bought homes built by well-known black contractors. S.A. Brookings was one such contractor who built homes in the Durkeeville community for his family as well as his children as wedding gifts. With strong recreation programs, juvenile delinquency and crime didn't have a chance in the community. Florida Dwight championed recreation for Jacksonville's African-American youth. She championed another victory in the hiring of Emmett Chip Reed who started out at the Oakland Park. Barbara Lucas, the daughter of Eugene and Willie D. Lucas, grew up in Durkeville and became the bride of Henry Hank Aaron. Christianity, athletics, and talent were among common traits of this family. Her brothers played professional ball, too. William Devon Lucas was the vice president of the Atlanta Braves. Lillian and James P. Small were destined to become legends because of their contribution. Throughout the community, they called him Papa Small. Small was the coach at Stanton for 33 years. In addition to sport, he also directed the Majorette, Cheerleaders, and Stanton's first band. Due to his positive impact on the lives of so many youth, the Durkeville Ballpark was renamed the James P. Small Ballpark in 1980. Dr. Alvin White said about Small, he coached everything. If you played sports at Stanton, you played for Coach Small. I had always dreamed of coaching against Coach Small and beating him. But when it actually happened, it was the saddest victory of my life. The grand dame of songsters from this neighborhood was Alpha Hayes Moore. By steamliner, airplanes, buses, and trains, Moore's Glee Club traveled and performed around the world. Dr. Moore claimed a major victory for the city when she brought international concert pianist Philippa Duke Schuyler for a concert at New Stanton High School. Schools and churches played important roles in the educational and spiritual needs of citizens. The church auxiliaries and choirs performed extraordinary services. Religious and civic associations sponsored afternoon teas, providing opportunities to observe the social graces. Isaiah Jones built for his family in 1914 is still occupied by his daughter, Olivia Forrest. She attended the Boylan Haven School for Girls. Alumni of this former Jacksonville school have become elected officials, authors, and outstanding citizens. Durkeville citizens became lawyers, gaining prominence for civil rights, scouts, earning the highest ranks, and golfing enthusiasts. Jacksonville Ladies of the Links Golf Club, organized in 1947 by Roberta Holland and Gertrude Stiles, continues to exist. The ballpark has been a landmark in this community since 1926. It was home to the first Golden Glove Boxers Championship. Boxing matches were well supported by the community and the city. Organizations such as the Florida Boxing Amateur Association packed the crowds in the ballpark throughout the 1940s and 50s. Boxers worked out at Jack's Gymnasium with trainer Sam Jones. Some of these boxers were Henry Daniels, Walter Marshall, Lee Vincent Bellamy, T.J. Bevel, Dan White, and many other youth. Baseball was yet another well-sponsored recreation. The Mount Ararat Sanatorium Guild played benefit games in support of the community health needs. Baseball was enjoyed by children and adults, sponsored by business, civic, and religious organizations.
public, parochial, and private schools had drill teams that marched in parades. They competed and, with others and won trophies and ribbons for performance. Though segregation was the law, the Recreation Department influenced limited integration of public facilities early on. Durkeville's youth hosted the Florida Association Tennis Championships on the Riverside Courts in 1950, before Blue Laws and Jim Crow were outlawed. Mrs. Amy Stewart Curry served as president of the local tennis club. Mrs. Josephine Mears was their coach. Teams of the Durkeville community traveled to matches in West Palm Beach, Miami, and the Bahamas. Doctors Earl Cullins, Janetta Betch Cole, and John Lewis were among many luminaries who started out from the nurturing field of Durkeville. The recreation directors served many roles. They were friends, playground directors, coaches, reference librarians, teachers, fundraisers, recruiters, sponsors, counselors, and advisors to thousands of children and adults. Florida Dwight and Emmett Reed along with their peers, Carlton Bryant, Essie McCray, Julius Ginyard, Juanita Bass, Roy McCloy, Clara Davis, Emma Hightower, and numerous others became the Pied Pipers that would lead children in the community to assume their roles as successful leaders wherever they would live. Within the boundaries of the Durkeville community, an old African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child was put into practice. Surrogate Durkeville parents, such as family doctor Emmett H. Washington, community servant Susie E. Talbert, scout leader Bruce Selden, WPA worker Elvira Gibson Brown, supermama Willie D. Lucas, and thousands of unnamed others dedicated their being to recruiting youth to participate in wholesome activities that help to develop character, principles, values, and leadership. These activities were given the endorsement of the community. Throughout the year, adolescents enjoyed community dances, talent shows, craft exhibits, award ceremonies, banquet, doll and puppet shows, fashion shows, oratorical contests, and sports galore. Street swimming pool opened in era equally as important as adequate housing when it opened in 1950. Children no longer had to swim in unsafe sinkholes to find relief from the burning summer heat. The Jefferson Street swimming pool was welcomed by the children and parents of Durkeville, Blodgett Home, and all of Jacksonville. With the superior staff and program, swimming was to become as safe a sport as a tennis match. Through the years, star athletes in the Jacksonville community came from Durkeville or to Durkeville. Durkeville was Jacksonville's springboard for the launching of professional careers. Athletic heroes and heroines are fondly remembered for the victories in Durkeville. The Durkeville community was as supportive in death as it was in life and all of its celebrations. The Burial Society provided moral, spiritual, and financial support for its neighbors. Businesses and professional training schools were commonplace in the community, as well as a garden circle where members held monthly meetings in a Durkeville home that they purchased. Two Spot was a popular nightclub on the edge of town. The owner of the Two Spot nightclub, Charlie Ed Craddock, opened several businesses in the Durkeville community and lived in Durkee Garden. Craddock also sponsored teams for boys, girls, women, and men, supplying all of them with uniforms. The 
grand finale each summer activity for schools and parks was the Joseph Lee Day celebration at Wilder Park. Lee, an elected state representative and state senator, was Jacksonville's first black attorney in 1873. Arts and crafts at the Joseph Lee celebration were exhibited on a grand scale. First aid and emergency care were also important services for which members of the community prepared. Many registered and licensed practical nurses were trained at Brewster Hospital and the Duval Medical Center, which were located in the Durkinville community. In spite of the various wars and conflicts that disrupt the peace of mind and peace of community, Durkinville will forge stronger than ever in the next millennium and the 21st century because of the love and nurture received from its residents, caretakers, public officials, and members of the Durkinville Historical Society. The Durkinville Historical Society, organized to preserve the past, document the present, and plan for the future of a community that they and their loved ones were born in, lived in, and died in. Durkinville, a rich legacy. And you're watching the Jacksonville History Show. Our guest is Lloyd Washington. A nice video about uh, Durkinville, Lloyd. Uh, how can people find out more about Durkeeville? Durkeeville, we're, we're located on the corner of 19th and Myrtle. We're open every day from um, 9 o'clock in the morning till uh, 1 in the afternoon. And we're work working on working, uh, being open on every weekend also. Mm -hmm. so we, have, we have a website. Okay. And uh, Durkeeville, it's uh, DurkevilleHistoricalSociety.org. It gives the phone number and all kind of get in contact with us and everything. Okay. Thank you very much for being with us on the Jacksonville History Show. Thank you for having us.